bring to you our apostle and overseer of my headquarters church, I mean the Temple of Jesus Christ in West Palm Beach, Florida. I have in reference a none other than the Apostle Marvin Smith. Give the Lord a hand clap for him. Go ahead and praise the Lord. Go ahead and give God a praise. Go ahead and call his name. Go ahead and call him by his name. Come on, call him by his name. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. If you want a miracle, shout Jesus. Help your hand and praise the Lord. Touch your neighbor, tell them we in the old campground. Where you can get your miracle anytime. If you can only believe. All things are possible. Now I believe. I come to get my miracle. Now give God the praise for me. the Lord on your side, you wouldn't be here right now. So thank God for Jesus, tripping you to be here tonight. How many glad to be on the old campground? On the very first night you are here, you are in store for a blessing from the Lord. Touch your neighbor, tell him I'm going to get my blessing. I'm going to get my blessing. Tell them right now. Yes, Lord. Hell yes, sir. Yes, well, while you stand and lift your hands up as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God strengthen us. Give us guidance and leadership how to preach your word. Give your people what you would have them to hear. This night, let your miracle working power come down. Save somebody. Deliver somebody. Set some soul free. In the name of Jesus, we believe in you tonight for a miracle for everyone. In the sound of my voice, touch those that are passing by. Touch those driving by in their car. Touch everyone that come on this campground. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 12 and verse 20. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with at one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's <coughs> chamberlain, their friend, desired peace, because their country was nurtured by the king's country. I pay attention to the next verse very close. Read. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. Mm -hmm. Read. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. Mm -hmm. Read. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, right. because he gave not God the glory. All right. All right. And he was eating a worm right. and gave up the ghost. All right. You better give God the glory. Amen. I said you better give God the glory. I'm out to give him the glory right now.
Give God the glory and he will give you the victory. Amen. Now, the word of God comes to us and tells us that on a certain day, it's King Herod dressed up in his kingly array, array and he sat upon his throne. While he sat upon his throne, he made a speech unto them. While he was making a speech, the people began to say, it is the voice of God and not the voice of man. See, they trying to make man God. Say amen. One scripture says, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was dark. Man today is trying to steal God's glory. And I'll give a witness to that. Everything God made, he's trying to change it around. God made a man a man, they're trying to make a man a woman. Say amen. Everything God made, the man is trying to turn it around. God made man holy, man is trying to make him there unholy. Say amen. And because he had on these kingly clothes, something about putting on fancy rich clothes can make people change. Can anybody say amen? amen? Putting on certain kind of clothes and wearing a certain kind of, having on certain kind of hat or putting on certain kind of shoes right, and yeah. cause some people to exalt themselves and think themselves to be higher than other people who are less fortunate. Oh, just because you have a beautiful house or a big fine car, yeah. it doesn't make you any better than anybody else. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. God says if you humble yourself in the sight of God, yeah. he will exalt you and do the secret. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. God don't want you to go and make nobody out of yourself. God wants you to yield yourself yeah. to him. Yeah. Get saved and get delivered. Amen. Get changed and he will make somebody out of you. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. We don't want to be what we make ourselves. No. We want to be what God can make us out of. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. If that's what I can do for myself, yeah. it's what God can do for me. Yeah. Say amen. Right. So I got to make myself humble. I got to make myself meek. I got to stop thinking so high of myself. Stop thinking that I'm somebody so big. And you see the day today that even children don't want to give God the glory. Even if you ain't saved and you're walking by this tent, you know there's a God somewhere. You know God is standing sitting high and looking low. Even if you haven't been saved in your life, every time you look at the moon, you know there's a God. Every time the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, you know there's a God. You know man didn't do it. You know man didn't hang it up there, and you know man don't make it set. It's got to be a God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. So the invisible things of him that was created were made possible by the things which do not appear. So the things which are not were made possible by the things which are. So the things which are not are invisible things like faith. Faith is what made the sun stand in the sky. Faith is what created the heaven and the earth. Faith in God speaking his word. God spoke his word and said, let there be light and there was light. Yeah. Say amen. amen. And every day you look at the sun, you're seeing the sun give a witness to you that there's a God somewhere. Amen. Say amen. Right. Every time you look at the ocean and look at the sea or look at the ground or look at the house, every time you look at the trees blowing in the breeze, you know there's got to be a God somewhere. don't know God, you can stop and say, Lord, I thank you for the sun being in the sky. You can give God that glory. Even if you ain't saved, you can say, thank God for letting me live to see another day. You don't have to be so saved. You don't have to be so sanctified to be able to give God the glory. Even in the old days, every day talk was given God. 
I don't know about other races, but black, black people. Black people preach. Right. It's my Indian brother out here. Amen. He ain't ashamed of his Indian heritage. That's what I love about him. I say amen. This my white brother right here. He ain't ashamed of his white heritage. And I'm, a, I'm their black brother. And I ain't ashamed of my black heritage. But we all love one another and see each other as equal. Because God made us the same way he made them. Amen. The same God made us out of one blood. Out of the blood of Adam came all men. Say amen. So we are all some kin to each other. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you Jesus. So therefore, it's God. Give God the glory for just being born. You can give God the glory for feeding you a meal this morning. You can give God the glory for waking you up this morning and starting you on your way. You can give God the glory for being able to wave your hand and being able to You can give God the glory for being able to blink your eye and breathe in your nostrils. Give the glory. Shout yeah. But we know, me and these brothers know, that faith brought everything to pass. Faith is what brought this world here. Faith is what brought the cause and the house and that man. So what's it going to take for you to get your miracle? It's going to take faith. Say amen. Touch your neighbor and tell him tonight is the night for your miracle. Have faith in God. I'm, I'm going to speak a, a miracle on you right now. Your miracle is in giving God the glory. Praise is just one way to give Him the glory. Praise is the only one way to give God the glory. Another way to give God the glory is to give Him your life. Give Him your life. The Bible said, Believe upon the name of Jesus and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So when you give Jesus your life, you are giving Him the authority to be your Savior. And something you don't hear too much about. Also to be your Lord. You want him to be Lord over your life. Lord means he is the boss. He is the authority. He is the one that directs your path. Scripture said in Psalm, and Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So you got to acknowledge God in everything you do. Start out by acknowledging at your purpose for being here. That's the first step. What is your purpose for being on the earth? The purpose for being on the earth is to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify the Father in heaven. Your purpose for being here is to reconnect with your creator. The clothes you put on don't make you who you're supposed to be. The car you drive don't make you who you're supposed to be. The house you live in don't make you who you are. What makes you somebody is that you serve the right God. Yeah. You're serving the God of yeah. creation. You're serving the God that made heaven and earth. You're not serving Buddha. You're not serving Allah. Yeah. You're serving God in the name of Jesus. Come yeah. on, shout glory. So, when you don't know him, you give him the glory by listening when he called. When you walk him out his tent, you didn't know it, but God was calling you. Some of you in this high of my voice from under his tent right now, you don't know it, but God is knocking on your door. Amen. He sends his men and women of God to call you in. Amen. I am the hand of God extended out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, Come home, baby. Come home, yeah. my daughter. Come home, brother. Come home, sister. It's time for you to pack up your bag and go home. Yeah. And 
the devil is not your father. The devil is not your father. What you're doing following him. Amen. Say amen. amen. Rather than giving God the glory. Amen. Who we don't follow God. Talk about it. Talk about it. You're going to automatically follow the devil. Because the devil takes everybody whose hearts and minds have been blind. Come on. Come on. If you don't want the truth. I don't want to go to church. I don't want the truth. Come on. If you don't want the truth, you want the devil. The devil is out there waiting for anybody that don't want the truth. Come on. Yeah. God's word says, my truth be hid. is hid from them that were lost, whose mind the prince of this world have blinded. Your mind is blinded from the truth. And the devil, the devil is waiting with open arms. Come on. Come on. Just like Jesus said, come unto me, all. The devil is saying, come unto me. All who don't want the truth, come unto me. All who blind, come unto me. All who don't want to go to church, come unto me. And you don't know it, but when you're out there in the world, you are following the prince of the air, which is Satan. Say amen. Satan don't love you. Satan wants to destroy you. Satan wants to kill you. Satan wants to trample you. Satan wants to make a trap out of you. And just like a milk, milk cotton, when he finished using you, he want to ball you up and discard you. He don't mean you no good. I come to tell on the death. He want to fill your Veins with drugs, yes. alcohol, yes. fill your mind with lust, yes. violence, anger, yes. rebellion, yes. and therefore you won't want to have nothing to do with God. Amen. I come to turn you around and tell you it's time to come back home. Yes. It's time to turn back to the Father. It's time to arise and go back to your father's house and give him the glory by saying, Father, I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you will accept me back as just a servant in your house, I'll be happy to stay in the house of God. Don't expect me to come back at somebody high. I'm not coming back to be high. I want to be the lowest thing in the church. I'm coming back lowly and meek. Somebody said lowly and meek. Out there in the world, the devil got your mind exalted. The devil says, because you got on, because you got on a new set of hair and you put it on your head, it makes you another woman. Because you got on a new set of a new set of pain in there, it makes you another woman. Because you got your pants dragging down behind behind your behind. Below your knees almost, it makes you a better man. But the devil is a liar. You're not nobody just because what you put in your hair. You're nobody just because you put some nails on your finger. Hollywood told you that lie. And Hollywood is following the devil. The devil is the conductor of the Hollywood train. The devil is the conductor of the Hollywood train. So you got to tell the devil. You ain't gonna fool me no longer. That I'm something when I'm nothing with you. You trying to tell me I'm so big and high and mighty. It's because I deal drugs and I make a lot of money. Because I drive that loud colored car jacked up in the air with an expensive ramp. Just because I put an expensive chain around my neck. 
you try to tell me I'm somebody valuable. But it ain't what you put on that make you valuable. It's what you put in. It's what's in your heart. If you got mess in your heart, then your outer part is a mess also. I say it again. If you got mess in your heart, the outer man is a mess also. But if you got truth and love and God in your heart, then your outer man gonna be glorifying God. And you are somebody. You are somebody. You are somebody. But not, not of your own power, but you are somebody in God. Tell your neighbor, I'm somebody in God. But in yourself, you are nothing. But in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. Ain't nothing in your flesh but the motion of sin. Amen. Amen. Everybody in the Bible that tried to give glory to flesh, they were destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. This man, Herod, stood up and said, I am the great king. Yeah. Worship me. Yeah. And in the old days, the Roman, Roman kings were considered to be God. The Greek kings were considered to be God. And when they died, they said they never died. They said they lived eternally through their lineage. They lived through their next seed. They continued to live on. So they said that the, the king of Rome and the king of Egypt never died. Right. But they live on through their children, their next son, and the dynasty that yeah. followed follow after them.